So, gloved up. Because I think that some level of protection is always better than no level of protection when you're working with solder. And we've got our board set up. And I'm going to run through the build order that I have found to be just the easiest to put together and the least amount of frustration for this particular board. We're going to start out with our momentary switch. It's just the easiest. Sometimes it'll come with the uh, tape already attached to it. I'll just lose that. You want to leave a little bit of the lead, probably a little bit more of the lead than you normally would on a project like this because if this ends up going in an enclosure, you're going to want a little bit of metal exposed to solder to. And so that's why I'm leaving that in place. I might cut it down a little bit more once it's in place, but that's good for now. So that's our switch. It's marked S1 and reset on the board. Just put that down in there. Flip it over so that it's resting comfortably. I'm actually going to take, just so we get a fairly 90 degree kind of bend, I'm going to take one of our headers, or our sockets, and put it underneath there. Make it two. Now, you may want to make sure that you end up with a very flush switch. If this ends up above the board a little bit, every time you press it, you're going to get a little bit of fatigue. And that little bit of fatigue can ultimately crack the metal, and you got to go through and repair. So, just something to bear in mind. We are using... This is .022 inch diameter rosin core solder. It's 62.32.6, and uh, it does the job very nicely. We've got our iron already hot to trot, and we're going to tack this in place. Soldering iron, heat always goes on first, and then you add your solder. Heat first, solder on. And you'll note that I always exhale slowly. There's not an extractor where I'm currently doing this work. Because there's not an extractor, uh, breathing out, I just don't, you don't want to suck in solder fumes. It's just bad. There's our switch. So that's our first component. Secondarily, we want to put on our, this is our 12 by 24. This is for jumpers. And this will go on second. And this can kind of set at an angle. It should be all right. And whenever you're doing something that has multiple pins, you do just want to do a couple of tack solders to hold it in place before you uh, do the whole row. So that way you can flip it over and examine it. So we're just going to do one. Make sure it looks flat. We're going to do this corner right here. And the reason we're doing the uh, 12 by 2 first is because the double rows always have a habit of lying flat. So as you can see, that's nice and even. As opposed to when we do these sockets, which are single row, and we put it on, you, you really have to press it, but there's a lot of wobble, generally. It doesn't take a lot to make it come off center, but I'll show you how we're going to rectify uh, that situation later on. So now that we've got a nice clean, right up against the board look here, we're going to put another tack opposite the first one, which will be right here. And then we're just going to go down the row. Yep, good.
So there you go, there's our 24. Quick inspection to make sure that nothing is shorting out. No, we look good. For our next component, I'm gonna put on our resistor. Now, I personally prefer when you've got a space that's only this big, that's fairly tight, when you've got to bend it right at the casing, uh, it makes me nervous. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna leave it straight, give it a little bend, and then from the top down, we're gonna curve it around so that I don't have to bend it right at the casing. That's gonna relieve the stress on that casing. See there? So resistor doesn't matter which side goes in where, just like the switch and the in our uh, the headers that we just put in place. So that's what it looks like in place. And we're just gonna attack that. Bend our pins. Keep it in place while we solder. And we use our cutters to cut it as flush as possible. All right, so that's our resistor in place. Now what we're looking for is, uh, this is gonna be our two by three. So our six position header right there. And that goes right at the head of our 24. Short contacts go in, the gold ones stay exposed. And same thing, just by putting this in place, since it is a four position, or rather a, a two row, uh, one tack should hold it. We'll check to make sure that it looks good. And then we'll tack the rest of it up. Now since this is the side that's leaning, the whole board is touching the, uh, the mat here on this edge rather than this edge. We're gonna assume that there's better contact here. So that is where we do our tack. We look at the top, same thing, nice and clean. Nice 90 degree angle. So I can comfortably do my second tack. And we can do the other four. Make sure those are nice and thick. All right, so next we have our the inside row. We're gonna do four of these, our female sockets. Um, but we're actually going to make use of all eight in order to make sure that everything is nice and plumb and square. So these ones, we're going to do the inside ones, the ones closest to the headers that we just put in place. So we're going to set up sets of... We're going to have all eight out here. We're going to set up sets of two. And by doing that, we're going to take one of these headers that actually we're going to make use of later. And these are going to go on the underside of the board rather than on top of. And we're going to use these to square up. You want to use one of the two center pieces. So you've got eight holes long, and you want to use hole number four or number five. And six pins across. So if you're using the eight, that's what you're looking for. See how that has a nice 90 degree? 
and that will hold in place. So we're using one to brace the other to form a little square truss. And same thing here. We're giving it four legs. Each one of these headers is going to act as a leg. And we're putting the long parts of the header, the actual gold flashed contacts, down into the uh, female sockets. Because that gives us the most contact. So there we go. There's our setup. See how that works? So we're going to take the whole contraption. And it's best to reach in between where you have your headers and flip it and set it down gently. So now what you've got is you've got those sockets being pressed up against the board nice and evenly because you have it set up like this. So now that I've got this flipped over, um, I'm actually going to tack one, two, three, four, one per socket set, and I'm going to do it in the middle. So when I press down to solder, it keeps everything nice and square and I'm not going to make it tilt or wobble as I apply a little downward pressure. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Now when I flip this back over, it should be nice and pretty. Yeah, we've got nice even, nice even sockets. This one's a little off kilter, just a little. So is this one actually. These aren't perfect, they don't have to be perfect, there can be a little give to them when you put the driver boards into this. Uh, it's not going to matter, I mean a little bit of wobble is fine, it's just the really crookedness that we need to worry worry about. So, But yeah, I am going to unsolder and resolder this particular set, I would like to see. So now that's in. I'm just going to do the rest of our tacks. Let me look. Make sure nothing looks like it's shorting. If you have a magnifying glass or a loop, it's a good time to make use of it. Looks like we're kosher. Good, good. 